You are listening to From Embers, a weekly show on CFRC 101.9 FM about anarchist and anti-authoritarian ideas and practice. We are broadcasting from the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples on land that has come to be called Kingston, Ontario, Canada because of the thievery and brutality of the Canadian state and its empire-loving parents. From Embers is about fires, some real and some metaphorical. Fires started generations ago and tended to over the years. Little sparks all across this territory that we hope will grow, spread, and engulf the thieving state called Canada and the capitalist system that has plagued this land since the fur trade. For this episode, I caught up with two members of the organizing collective for the Halifax Anarchist Book Fair. Here's a bit from their call out. We will not go back to normal. The pandemic has only intensified social control and surveillance, capitalism and colonialism, with those in power deepening their pockets through intensified industrial extraction, skyrocketing housing prices, and intolerable working conditions. While the defenders of this racist, colonial system look out for their own interests, we know that we are the ones who must look out and care for each other. The roots of ecological destruction, poverty, white supremacy, colonialism, police violence, patriarchy, etc. lie within the construct of authority itself. Anarchism helps us to understand the roots of these systems of power articulate our desires for self-determination, and dream of a world where all are free. It is crucial in these times that we find each other, create space to remember what liberation can feel like, share our grief and rage, and bring collective energy into our struggles. The book fair is for anarchists, those curious about anarchism, book lovers, and anyone simply questioning authority. It will feature publishers and book distributors, vendors, artists, and facilitators from all over North America slash Turtle Island. The day and weekend will include workshops, discussions, kids' activities, art exhibits, parties, and more. So the Anarchist Book Fair is one of the few in-person public anarchist events that I have seen happening during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, in part because tighter borders and less COVID cases in Nova Scotia made the gathering legal last summer when those of us in the rest of so-called Canada would have had to defy government regulations to host such an event. This year, the book fair is happening again, outside and masked, but otherwise as usual, and I was curious about how it felt to come together in large numbers right now, and what the organizers were hoping would come out of such an event. I hope that as people start to resume some of their social activities, there will be more gatherings like this elsewhere too, so that we can all get together, debrief these past years, and scheme for the coming years. A lot has changed since the last time I attended an anarchist book fair, and I think that we will need spaces like this to come together and plan for times to come. Here's my interview with the Halifax Anarchist Book Fair Collective. I'm uh, I'm Art. I'm a member of the Anarchist Book Fair Organizing Committee and have been for a few years. And I also do other organizing in other capacities in Halifax. Hi, I'm Max, and I'm also a member of the organizing committee for the Halifax Anarchist Book Fair for the past four years. Um, And otherwise, I live in rural Nova Scotia, unceded Mi'kmaq territory. Um, And how would you describe, like, what is the Halifax Anarchist Book Fair? Uh, The Halifax Anarchist Book Fair is a a day-long event. So we have um, tablers and workshops and other um, events like 
some parties or shows or things like that that are organized around that day. Um, so it's a free event for people to come together and discuss ideas and talk about different struggles and um, learn about anarchy. Uh, and who typically comes to the book fair? Generally, the folks who come to the book fair are just people who live in the city, who live in the, around the region. Um, and like probably as well, like f a few folks from away, like we'll tend to have um, people from Montreal, from Toronto, uh, sometimes from the Eastern part of like America, on other parts of Turtle Island. And what does the book fair mean by anarchist? What makes it an anarchist book fair? Uh, well, we specifically focus on and prioritize like tablers and dis book distributors who distribute um, materials that are based on like anti-authoritarian or anarchist ideas and practices. And then same with the workshops, you know, we, we prioritize workshops that are, you know, promoting kind of an anti-authoritarian or anarchistic or, um, you know, kind of like collective vision. I guess like gatherings like this can kind of be like in some cases, they're more like for people who are already anarchists to come together and find each other and talk about what's going on for them. And then sometimes it's more of an outward facing thing with the hopes of attracting people who maybe are not already anarchists, but are curious and can learn about anarchism in general. Uh, which do you think your event is, or is it both and how? Yeah, I think our event really tries to have a bit for everyone. And especially in the last, well, especially coming out of last year and also to this year, which we'll talk more about in other questions, I'm sure. Having the event open and in public space has really allowed us to um, kind of surprisingly like tap into other parts of the city and the community mm. that wouldn't normally come to a specific place, want to come into a specific building. But in terms of, yeah, like the way we make up our workshops and stuff, we always tend to have something that is like an intro 101 on this or like a discussion about this basic concept within anarchism. Um, and then we tend to have things that are like anarchistic and anti-authoritarian, but things that also um, have a wider, are part of a wider discussion um, in the public discourse, like things like indigenous sovereignty, anti-colonialism, um, abolitionism, like things that are kind of anarchist adjacent, you know, and have a wider, um, have, are parts of wider discussions and wider struggles. Yeah, I mean, I think we really um, want people who aren't familiar already with, you know, anarchist ideas and practices to feel like there's something for them and that they, they feel like the event is also for them, you know, um, as well as anarchists who, you know, been around for a while who want to have more kind of in-depth conversations with each other. So we, we hope that that kind of all of those folks can, can feel like it's a space for them. Can you tell us like a little bit about Halifax or about the region in general? Like if a random anarchist from Ontario asked, asked you about your context, like, oh, what's it like out there? What would you say? Um, I think I would say that Halifax is a colonial outpost, um, first and foremost. It's the most military. It's like the city with the most military, military structure or infrastructure in Canada. Um, historically as well, the region has a long history of um, poverty draft and like bringing in settlers to do the dirty work of um, colonialism and imperialism on behalf of the settler state of Canada. Um, I think it's a city that is defined by this from the beginning to now. Uh, where we held the book fair last year, for example, um, at the old Citadel Library, which has a big, ugly statue of Winston Churchill right in the center of it. That place is a mass grave for people who were uh, too poor to um, not be wards of the state, basically, back in the 18th century. And 
there's I think 4,500 graves underneath that site. Um, all of like mostly people who were privateers during different wars who became unemployed, who were, you know, uh, indentured servants who came over to build Halifax in the beginning, but then never found employment afterwards or never found, um, became indebted to different people and then couldn't pay that off. And they were forced to build the coffins that they're buried in underneath the city. So it is like, um, there's other, and there's all kinds of stuff like that around Halifax. There's like different places where there were stockades. There's like, um, a city, it's really a city that's built on layers of different and shifting colonial and capitalist practice of the state throughout the century. Yeah, I was just going to add maybe like as um, I, I, you know, I'm I'm from out here and I don't live in Halifax um, currently, but the, you know, the context there kind of it strikes me in terms of like comparing it to other cities in North America or across Turtle Island, Island that I've lived as being a place that um, has like a very, like a kind of like very strong sense of like people being like feeling rooted to that place, like more than other places that I've been. I don't know if either of you would agree with that, but there's like um, a sense of like kind of like a, a base sense of people kind of looking out for each other in a different kind of way than I've experienced in other cities. And I, I think that it's interesting because I don't like, you know, Halifax isn't always on the map in terms of like all of these, like, you know, like making, making the sort of anarchist news circuit or something in this way, but it's like, there's always projects going on that are like really rooted in mutual aid and really rooted in like people having each other's backs and like looking out for each other. And that's something that's always like struck me about the context there. Is there a lot of anarchist activity there? Like, are there a lot of anarchists to come to your anarchist book fair? There are some, there are some anarchists here. Um, I think a lot of people come who don't necessarily like label themselves as such. I don't, I think that it's interesting. It's an interesting place in that there's a lot of people who do sort of, yeah, anarchist adjacent organizing and um, have really have like, politics and ideas and values that like share a lot with anarchism um and a lot of those folks will like come to the book fair and there may be like there are definitely some people who identify strongly as anarchists as well but a lot of folks uh, might not necessarily use that label yeah i think there's a lot of people um who i guess would broadly identify like as anti-capitalist or like like allies to anti just like indigenous sovereignty struggles or like on the left or whatever. But I think there is a very small core group of anarchists. Um, but the people who will actually come will be like a broad spectrum of people from all of those groups. And then people who are also just interested. Um, Halifax also being like a college town, it's like kind of like, there's always some like interest from folks who are passing through. Um, like either in a year or in a couple of years and they always come out as well. Uh, what are some of the recent or ongoing struggles or campaigns or issues that are important there that you would expect to be discussed or represented at the book fair? Um, I think there are many. Um, I think there are, like has been ongoing, just like things that are happening across the continent um, are also happening here. Like the effect, like the, discussions and like memorials for just like all the horror stories that are coming out of the residential schools and like the reality of like Canadian, the Canadian state being like really rooted in genocide first um, in the genocide of children. Um, so that is like happening here. And there's like a lot of stuff that was going on for that last year as well for like the black lives matter stuff that was happening in the states there was a whole bunch of pretty unprecedented um demonstrations and rallies and direct actions that took place um like blocking off a bunch of streets holding up track of traffic for hours and end which is like pretty 
pretty unprecedented for Halifax. Um, and then as well, like there's a new wave of gentrification that is really um, happening in the city really strongly and is really affecting tenants. Um, and there's been some like some tenant organizing a little bit, but then there's also been um, a group called Halifax Mutual Aid that has been doing work to um, like try and alleviate some aspects of homelessness in a way that pressures the city to actually like house people for real in the city and the province. Um, so there's kind of like grassroots direct action and mutual aid based kind of approach to, to dealing with the ongoing housing crisis. Yeah. Another, um, you know, struggle that's pretty prominent here is like, um, protecting the water, protecting the land, especially like led by Mi'kmaq folks here. So there's a few different, um, you know, places that are kind of like uh, centers for that currently being like the Treaty Truck House at the um, uh, Shubenacadie River, which is to um, raise awareness and stop Alton gas. There's Treaty Truck House 2, which is at the, uh, in Windsor, which is, um, you know, around um, protecting the water there for the fish. And then there's, you know, been a lot of struggle um, around the moderate livelihood fisheries. And um, then some more like settler led um, blockades against, um, you know, clear cutting and things like that. So there's some, you know, more uh, across the territory kind of land based um, land defense type things as well. You are listening to From Embers on CFRC 101.9 FM, or you might be listening to the podcast edition of From Embers on your smartphone or other device. Uh, We are talking to the Halifax Anarchist Bulk Fair Collective about organizing a large gathering uh, during the pandemic last year and this year and what that's like and why it's important uh, and why we should all come together and talk about anarchism and our politics and all of these things. Here's the rest of that interview with the Halifax Anarchist Book Fair Collective.
beats can't be met the song Yo, can my needs all be met with a song Every once in a while when the evening stretches long All my needs only met with a song My heart has been wallowing Halifax is like kind of far from other major centers. Um, like maybe I would say, I don't know my guess, like the closest city that has an anarchist book fair or like anarchist social centers of any kind, maybe like either Quebec city or Boston, maybe, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, which are both pretty far. Uh, do you guys feel yourselves like a part of like a broader regional network of any kind? Are there connections between you and anarchist organizers elsewhere or is it more isolated than that? Um, I'd say that like in terms of, I think Halifax feels more connected to, uh, the rural land-based struggles that, uh, Max was discussing. Mm -hmm. um, than other struggles in other cities around Turtle Island. I think that like in, in terms of different like organizations and stuff, there's like more connections, but in terms of like a general feeling of, of um, connection to anarchisms elsewhere, uh, I, I don't know if, I don't know if most people really think about that too, too much. Again, like Max was saying earlier, um, there is this real sense of just being rooted in a region, you know, uh, with, with people from the Maritimes generally. Um, so we, we often feel more connected to the, the stuff around us in, in the rural areas than we do in other cities. Yeah, I do think that there's, you know, there are connections based in relationship between, you know, anarchists here and anarchists, I would say mostly like kind of Montreal, Toronto, other parts of Southern Ontario, um, but especially, you know, it, due to travel restrictions, a lot of that has been more like long distance in um, the past couple of years, for sure. But, you know, there's there's definitely like, um, you know, for instance, like there was a um, um, like memorial rally for Prisoner Justice Day last week. And I know that a lot of the folks who are part of like doing, um, you know, prison justice or anti-prison organizing here are connected in more like um, national networks as well. So there definitely are um, connections there in terms of, you know, like um, participating in some of these more, um, yeah, some of these like larger struggles that are that are broader than just the Maritimes. Halifax is also like, it is a major regional center. Um, like I grew up an hour outside of Halifax and Halifax was totally like town for me uh, and for like many other kids I knew in other rural maritime spaces. Uh, I Do you get people coming to the event from places like that, like from country places in the region surrounding it? Uh, is that a focus? Do you feel like there's kind of like a sense of like Halifax being a hub for anarchism in the same way as it's a hub for like you know, various other things like the art and music scene, that kind of stuff? Uh, we had a few, we've had a few tablers from rural uh, regions throughout, like specifically like Mi'kma'ki, like, um, and like other parts of the Wabanaki Confederacy. Like a couple years ago, we had people from Listigush um, who were trying to do land-based solidarity tabling. We had people, we've had people from Winnemagi, Cape Breton, 
Um, we've had people from the South Shore. So, yeah, people tend to come out. I, But I don't know if maybe Max, you could speak better to this. Um, but I don't know if people see Halifax as a place necessarily to be to do anarchistic stuff. Yeah, last year, um, one of the workshops was on mutual aid and we had breakout groups for different regions. And one of the breakout groups was like for people who were there from rural, like from different parts around like rural Maritimes. And um, so that was like an interesting space to kind of see who was coming out. And I would say it's not like that many people. Um, most people who attend, I think, are from or live in sort of HRM or like pretty close to the city. But um, I think hopefully more and more we're trying to get people to come from rural Nova Scotia, but speaking from someone, for, you know, as someone who lives rurally, um, a lot of people don't really like going to the city. <laughs> it's like not that appealing. Um, so it's kind of funny to like, yeah, be at, like, I'm trying to like convince people here to come and definitely like, you know, the city is is in some ways um yeah it's not seen as like that desirable of a place to spend a lot of time um i mean the, the traffic is like surprisingly terrible for a city of its size so i, mean, <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah that's so true and i mean it's it's i think it probably just depends who but it's like you know, a lot of people like who live rurally, like have animals to take care of, have of like different kinds of responsibilities that like make it harder to like go to the city for three days or whatever. And um, yeah, so I think it's something that like we want there to be more people who come from rural places and trying to figure out like how to get those folks to, mm -hmm. yeah, to prioritize it, <laughs> to come. Um, you guys like this is the fourth book fair, is that correct? Um, I think. Yes. And you guys are like total troopers. You've done this event during a hurricane two times now during the pandemic. Uh, why does it feel like so important to you to gather like this, even at times when maybe some people would say that you shouldn't? I think it feels like more important than ever, actually, to like come together and gather, um, especially when like so much of our lives have become a lot more isolated during the pandemic, um, that finding ways to like feel relatively safe, like gathering together and like having in-person conversations like felt, felt felt like just as important, if not more important than before to like, you know, really, um, yeah, feel connected with each other. Last year, we really just kept it to people within the region. Like we basically, you know, because of COVID kind of just asked people outside the region to not try and come because of all of the restrictions and everything and for safety reasons. So it felt like a really important time to really like focus on like regional issues and conversations and build more relationships there. Yeah, I think that one thing we've talked about, about as a group is like the need to continue to have anarchist events and for anarchist events to become adaptable in a way that is safe, but in a way that allows us to still engage in struggle because all the different struggles continue, even if we're all like inside and away from each other and isolated. Um, and if we don't engage in them, like in a way that is safe still social and still like, um, like feels good. Um, we will kind of be left behind, you know, um, as anarchists. So that's one thing, that's part of the reason I think we were so adamant about trying to still do it last year. And honestly, the reason we're doing it outside again, doing it in a public way again this year is that the adaptations that were kind of forced upon us last year to make it safe for COVID actually turned made the book fair better um made it reach a wider group of people um made it feel more in community and less like in a specific kind of cloistered away in a specific place um so yeah we were pleasantly due to the adaptation we had to take like we were pleasantly surprised 
where I live, a lot of folks, a lot of anarchists and a lot of people in general haven't seen each other in large groups like this in like more than a year, in many cases, more than 18 months. Um, I know things have been a little bit different out there. Can you talk a little bit about how that has been similar or different in Nova Scotia for you guys? Sure. So from pretty early on in 2020, um, the restrictions that were put in place here um, and I would say also the like culture here to like abide by the rules, which is, you know, questionable at times, but um, has created a situation where like the Maritimes uh, or like specifically the Atlantic provinces here had like a bubble with a, you know, mandatory quarantine. And so we, last year when we did the book fair, there were like almost no active cases here at all of COVID. So um, we have had some, you know, some outbreaks here. There have been some spikes, but it hasn't really been nearly to the same severity um, as in other places. And so uh, it's, it's kind of been a, somewhat unique context because of that where it has felt more possible to gather and feel safe with that due to the like low number of cases maybe this isn't about the book fair anymore but can i ask you about your take on the province's response to the pandemic like does it feel worth it to you to have stricter restrictions but then also like i feel like you guys like got a summer last summer like there were basically no restrictions as long as you stayed local. Uh, We didn't get that. A lot of people didn't get that. Um, Like, how do you relate to like such strict rules as an anarchist out there? For me, it really comes down to like, what, what rules are actually for keeping people safe and what rules are for like keeping, you know, the economy going and, and they're often very different. Um, So I think that like one of the things that comes up a lot is like, how do we as anarchists like think for ourselves in terms of like what is actually safe and how we prioritize um, people's safety versus following the rules, right? Because a lot of the rules are in place actually in order to like get us back to work so that we can like keep the cogs of capital running. And so that's felt like a really important distinction for me as an anarchist to make throughout this um, to understand that like some of the like rules and restrictions put in place by the state are things that like make sense to me, like wearing a mask, you know, and others are like clearly so that they can like keep people going to work where they, you know, um, continue to exploit people's um, labor, usually the lowest wage workers. So there's, there's a lot to it. Um, But yeah, to me, it's really important to just like differentiate between like what we know actually is going to keep us safe versus like what the state is telling us. Yeah, I'd agree. Like a lot of um, it's, it's been kind of weird to see in living like in the city where the during different waves, um, there were pretty like pretty strict resurgence or pretty strict restrictions at different points where, yeah, like some of the, seeing a lot of um, sort of the left in the city kind of really get behind the sort of progressive shaming culture of like um, really shaming uh, people for, you know, like not just strictly abiding by every rule the state lays out. Um, and people not people on the left not really wanting to make that distinction that Max just laid out, like what actually keeps people safe um, and like what, what is just the state trying to make it so the economy will still work. And so um, like its interests will be protected. Your provincial border is open now to people with two shots of a vaccine. Um, so I would imagine some people will be traveling to your event from out of town or out of the province. Does that worry you at all in the context of the pandemic? How do you guys feel about people coming for this event this year? I think we welcome it generally. Um, we want to hear and reconnect with people from other places. Um, I think as a region, we felt pretty isolated for a long time. Um, and as long as people 
are being safe, um, we feel we feel that we should welcome them. Do you think of hosting the gathering anyway, possibly with out of towners, as something that is like perfectly safe, or is it something that's kind of worth the risk it entails? Well, I don't think anything uh, can be perfectly safe by any means. Um, but the main thing for us is like you know doing an event outdoors in a place that has you know single digit kind of active cases feels um, definitely worth the very small risk that there could be. You said that you feel like it's extra important for people to come together this year. What are some of the things that you hope people can talk about or do at this gathering in particular this year? Um, I think all of our workshops are going to be somewhat um, like discussion based, kind of asking the question, okay, like what's next? Um, and we have them on a, a bunch of different topics, things that relate to anarchism and ecology, um, things that relate to, you know, um, indigenous sovereignty um, within Mi'kmaq, things around the housing crisis and things um, sort of around actually what you've been talking about, like COVID uh, restrictions in the state from an anarchist perspective. I think that's important to lay out. Um, but yeah, so I think that like all of, for all of those, we want people to come together precisely to kind of get out of the kind of stagnated, a little bit stagnated mode that the struggle has been in um, and sort of ask like, how do we re-engage with this um, in, in an effective way to make these struggles uh, effective and for us to, you know, um, move forward. Yeah, and I think a lot of anarchists here are involved in struggles around, you know, harm reduction and housing crisis and, you know, um, protecting land and water and things like that. And a lot of those can often feel like we're organizing in the in a crisis, right? We're, we're in crisis mode. And I think one thing that the, the book fair offers is a space where we can kind of take a step back, take like a bit of a wider view and place ourselves within a larger context, within a larger, um, you know, regional kind of struggle and yeah, be able to kind of focus ourselves in the relationships we can build from having those kinds of conversations rather than just like responding to crisis after crisis after crisis, which is like often, I think how, um, yeah, how a lot of uh, organizing can look here. Um, where I live, it I don't know if this is true where you live too, but where I live, it feels like things have been like really quiet and kind of, yeah, I guess stagnant is a good word basically since the pandemic um, with a few exceptions, uh, despite the fact that there have been like really inspiring movements happening elsewhere, like globally and especially in the US. Um, is that true in Halifax too? And if so, how do you sort of relate that to holding a gathering right now? In terms of like various struggles, there's been like some engagement, um, like and some movement building. And yeah, like last year in the, at the height of the pandemic, Halifax was also having thousand person protests and, you know, direct actions with, with a lot of people in the streets. Um, but it does kind of feel like it, it's, uh, that it's been off and on, like based, based on the pandemic and that, um, things will kind of, uh, like struggles will bloom and movements will bloom and then they will sort of die down really quickly. And like, then another thing will come up. Um, so I think that that has that sort of um, intermittent like resistance throughout the pandemic um, has been different than it would have been in the past where sort of struggles and movements would, would go on, you know, for, for a little while. Um, how normal are things going to be? Are there going to be parties? Are there going to be indoor gatherings? Is it more of like a just sort of daytime outdoor event? Like walk us through the day. How's it going to go? Yeah. So at this point, everything that um, we're organizing as a collective will, is planned to be outdoors. 
Um, so, you know, it'll be a, a full day event. Um, there'll be tabler set up from about, you know, 10 to six workshops will probably start, you know, an hour in, we haven't finalized the schedule exactly. And, um, you know, workshops will go through till the end of the day, there's going to be um, food available for people. Um, and, uh, and there will be like a sort of after event as well in, in, uh, in an outdoor space. There, m you know, may be other events organized sort of by other folks around it. So we're, we're hoping there might be an outdoor show uh, the night before and, and things like that. So we're just waiting for confirmation about a couple of other potential outdoor events to sort of complement the book fair. What are, obviously I haven't finalized your schedule yet. Um, but what are some of the things that you guys personally are particularly excited about happening? Like the workshop that you were most excited to get a proposal for, or like the party that you really want to go to? Well, I guess, I don't know if we should talk about this, if the workshops aren't really confirmed. In that case, like, what is your favorite part of the book fair? Is it like walking around the tables? Is it like workshops? Is it just seeing people casually around the space? What do you look forward to at a book fair like this? Yeah, I think there's like not a lot of, specifically in Halifax, there's not a lot of explicitly anarchist events. And for me, it just feels great to actually have an explicit, an explicitly anarchist space like that. Um, and a specifically anarchist space that like non-anarchists can engage in. Um, that feels, that always feels really good for me. Um, I love hearing when people who otherwise would be like attached to different movements, but never know who to connect with come up and talk about it to like people to like people and volunteers at the tables or or myself and um or like people who have otherwise never engaged with like anarchist and anarchist adjacent ideas um and like ha are like really inspired by it i guess yeah one of the things i think about in terms of like what i get excited for is just creating a space and like being in a space where we can really like dig into you know what our ideas and values are and you know having those kinds of conversations with new people can be really refreshing for me like i don't often like you know the, the, because there's not that many anarchists here there's not that many anarchist events here it's not that often that you, you can just really delve into some of those discussions with with um with people that we might not have before so i found that to just be really like enlivening for myself and for like helping me to like also express my own politics and ideas to like be in those spaces where we're we're having those discussions and, and just meeting new people there can you explain why you think it's important to have like a specifically anarchist space like that? Like, why not just call it a book fair and then kind of like sneak in anarchism when people show up? I think it's really important to me to be really clear about being anarchist. Um, personally, I'm not really interested in just sort of like vaguely being an anarchist within like a kind of like leftist milieu or something like that. Um, it's much more interesting to me to like actually be explicit like no we are actually like um you know against the state and we are we want liberation for all like what does that actually look like because you know i think that yeah like it probably wouldn't look that different maybe to have like an anti-authoritarian book fair or like something more like a radical book fair or something like that but i think that here the context in halifax is interesting because i think that people are a little bit less likely to like use that word. And that actually makes me like want to be more clear about what that is, you know, and to create a space where we actually like get to clarify what our ideas are as anarchists. Um, and even if people don't leave that space as anarchists, at least they leave that space with a better understanding of like what anarchism is, what anarchy is and um, you know, understanding where, where they're, lives and their values might intersect with that. 
So I think that for me, yeah, it's really about like being clear about who we are and like really um, creating a culture where we're not like scared of using that word and of being like, no, like we, we are anarchists, like this, this is who we are. And this is what, what we're about. Like, and for my, I guess for myself, like I, while I like, yeah, like I'm, I guess more of a tendency with an anarchism that is okay with being in non-anarchist spaces as an anarchist um, and organizing within the sort of left milieu um, as frustrating as that can be sometimes. But I think that like there are a space for, there's space for like movements to develop and like, uh, like be, be in conflict with the state and then not necessarily always having to be like capital A anarchy. Um, but there's also spaces for just like education and like, and like learning and develop, developing like our ideas and our strategies and our tactics. And I think when we're doing um, like that theoretical and abstract work, like it being within the context of anarchism, of coming out of this tradition, I think is explicit, it's important to make explicit because if it was just radical book fair, Halifax or whatever, um, that, that emphasis on why we want to be in conflict with the state, why we want to be in conflict with capital explicitly, why we don't want just like some greenwashed land-based movement, why we don't want to just like have the NDP table, you know, um, for an electoral victory. It's important. It's important for that, like, to be the reasons to be explicit why we don't want that stuff, and that stuff is because we are anarchists or follow an anarchist strategy or want to follow promote an anarchist strategy. Do you think that people in that city in general know about anarchism, or that there are anarchists in their town, and do anarchists have like an overall positive or negative reputation? Do you think in that place? Yeah, I think that like Halifax as a college town has a, a long history with like uh, traditional, like kind of like Marxist Leninist college organizing. Um, and then a lot of like electoral, um, like strat, like electoral kind of stuff, like NDP radicals working within the NDP or whatever, or radicals working within like regular business unions and stuff. So I think that I don't know what the reputation of like anarchists are within the city and I'm not going to speak for that, but I think that bringing in anarchists, the idea that like this can be done in a different way or this can be done in a more direct way um, is kind of novel for the city because mm -hmm. there isn't a lot of organizing and movements that are explicitly oriented towards choosing those strategies and those tactics. You did the event outdoors last year as well. Um, and you said earlier that you appreciated that because it sort of like put you in public. Uh, what were some of the reactions or engagement that you got from like passersby during that event that you hope will happen again, or maybe some that you hope will not happen again? I don't know. Uh, largely, I think it was positive. Like people were excited to see something different. There was literally no public events that happened last year. So people were really like happy to see anything happen. Um, so a lot of, um, we hope to replicate that like positive experience. We had no bad experiences with the state or the police, which was nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the spot that we were at last year, the park or the sort of grassy area and walkways right outside the old library down Spring Garden is like a super, super high traffic pedestrian area, right? So we had like, probably hundreds of people who, you know, were walking through there anyways, who stopped. And like many of those people like stayed and attended workshops and, and, and bought books and like were psyched about it. Yeah. So that's been really, yeah, like a really exciting hmm. um, result of the adaptation to, to doing an outdoor event. Um, 
Yeah. And I definitely hope that that, you know, happens again, that there's, that there's um, people who can sort of uh, come, come who, who, who didn't necessarily even know it was happening. Um, but I also imagine just it being an outdoor event that lots of people like Art said earlier, might feel more comfortable coming to a park rather than like an indoor building, right? To check it out. Do you think it changes the thing you were saying earlier, Max, about like the opportunity to dig deeper and have in-depth conversations about our specific politics and worldviews if there are like strangers streaming by the whole time? Or is it still possible to do that? I think it's definitely still possible. Like the workshop spaces still are kind of like you know um can still be kind of like with a container that 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 can kind of facilitate some of those more in-depth discussions to happen um so i don't think that that takes away from it um at all i think it may mean that like people who have maybe had like less of these in-depth conversations have more exposure to some of those, mm. you know, deeper conversations, which I think ultimately is also positive. If there's like a 2023 book fair, a 2022 book fair, and like COVID is just not really a thing people are talking about at all anymore, do you think the event would still be out in a park? You know, the thing is, is, you know, our second year also, as you mentioned earlier, we had a hurricane that um, <laughs> Hurricane Dorian came through and we postponed the book fair did it the next day in the parking lot of the indoor space that we had rented because there was no electricity. So we've actually only had one book fair that was like actually inside. Um, you know, the biggest stressor of course is just the weather. Like what if it rains, right? Um, and usually September is a relatively dry month besides uh, large storms. So, um, I definitely could imagine that we would continue to do it outdoors, um, you know, in, in the future as well. Yeah, I'm for it being outside forever. Do you have a rain plan? Like, is there a strategic plan if it's like pouring rain? Yeah, we'll be checking the weather. And if it's, you know, more than a 40% chance of rain, then the afternoon before we will be postponing it to the next day. Um, okay. to the Sunday. And um, also, you know, it's, we're doing it on the long weekend this year as well. So if for some very, like, you know, slim chance, both Saturday and Sunday are both super rainy, then we would be actually rain dating to that holiday Monday. Um, if people want to, like, find out about the book fair, potentially even attend the book fair, how do they do that? How do they find out about you guys? Our uh, website is Halifax Anarchist Book Fair. Noblogs.org. And there's a Facebook event. Um, those are probably the two best ways to know, um, you know, to get updates about what's going on. Or just look at if you're if you're from Halifax, you can check out the uh, the polls. Posters will be coming soon. The, the location is going to be announced about a week before the event. It makes it feel like like a rave or something that you're doing that, like some kind of top secret fun event. I like that.
anarchist and anti-authoritarian music podcast. That's going to come out every month. Ransom what? So what's like, I mean, what's your like ultimate goal, I guess, in the end? Yeah. We out for the Rising up against the oppressor. The attitude that you see in hip-hop. Let me uh, give you a sample of some of the uh, lyrics that had some of the older ladies among the stockholders quite with dismay. Go to ransomnotes.libsyn.com Or get them from the Channel Zero Network.